Okay, in the comment section, I need you to tell me what your favorite doll is. Let's be real. Let's be 100. Everybody use more than one doll. If you don't know what doll means, just look in the comment section and just follow everybody else. Um. Okay, anyway, a doll. For those of you that don't know, when you hear us say doll, it means digital audio workstation, D-A-W. So sometimes people say D-A-W or others say doll. I say doll. It's just shorter. But anyway, what's your favorite doll? Don't be posting five, six that you use. Just post one. Like, give me the one that you, like, reach for immediately. Like, if you had to choose only one, and I mean, like, only one, what is that doll that you will pull for? Me? What's mine? I'm glad you asked. My favorite one would be Studio One. Hands down. Right? So that may bring relief to a lot of you guys because you was probably wondering what's going on because I'm seeing you work a lot in Ableton 12 and you be in Bitwig a lot too. And so did you leave Studio One? No, I didn't leave Studio One. It's just fun making beats in Logic. I'm sorry, in Ableton. I don't use Logic. I used to use Logic. It is fun making beats in Ableton. It is fun making beats in Bitwig. That's just what it is. Studio One is, well, like if I had to choose one to just live with for the rest of my life and can never touch anything else, like if I was paid like $5 million to just use one for a year and don't touch nothing, don't look at nothing, it would be Studio One. Because I feel like Studio One has all of the tools and everything that I need to do to be successful as a music producer. I feel like Studio One is that. It's just that they lack a lot of create creative tools and advanced tools. Everything is so simple, which is a good thing about Studio One. And I think that's a lot of people's reason why they use Studio One. It's just simple and it gets the job done. But when it's time to get creative and do things out of the box, you know, because music these days is stale. I'm just going to say that it's stale. It's, it's boring to me. I enjoy music. I'm a music person. I love it. Every once in a while, I stumble across people that, that does some amazing things in their music. But I'm just saying in general, the stuff they play on radio, you know, like music that people think is fire. It's not fire. It's like the same stuff over and over and over. It's like, bro, that's, it's like we need something different and unique. And so I feel like in programs like Bitwig or Ableton, and beyond that, beyond creativity, just being being able to, if I'm going to bring fire, like, like what everybody else is used to hearing, you know, but we still don't have those advanced tools like the sampler inside of Studio One and um, Note Effects and um, some other. Anyway, I digress. I, I I can be on this video talking about the downfalls and stuff I like to see, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to do that. I just want y'all to post y'all favorite doll, right? And like, here is my predictions. Oh, here is where I see things in the future. Now, we're at the end of 2023. Usually people are given their 10 best plugins and their 10 best this and their 10 best that. And, you know, it's usually happening around December or whatever. I don't really have one of those videos. I did that before. I don't, yeah, I don't really... Most of the plugins I use is the same anyway. I'll get a new one here and there, but most of them is pretty much the same. Um, I don't really have a favorite. It's just some I pull more than, than others, you know, but it's like, it, it just depends on what I'm working on. You know, if I'm working on cinematic music, then I'll pull for certain things. If I'm working on track music, not, anyway. 
with Ableton 12 and the Push 3 being on the market, I think Ableton 12 has a shot at reaching more people. And that's what I will say about that. I've been in the Ableton 12 beta version and the things that they're putting on the table is crazy, yo. It's crazy. It's like, it's, it's like things that should have been in the doll all along, kind of, sort of, right? Like, strum. Studio One has strum. We have that ability. It's a series of command keys. What I don't even remember how to do it, but the way that is in front of you, just, I kind of want to say, hey, personas, look at, study, study Ableton. Study Ableton Live 12 and the features that they just released. I kind of want to say that, but I don't, I don't know if I'm if I'm out of place if I say that. But like those are the type of tools that we need and want in Studio One. How how like a lot of what they're doing could be the note effects. That could be the updated note effects, yo. Like with the strum, you know, we can have a note effects called strum and that's all it does. It strums the notes or like have some, some way of like breaking things up, just like how they're doing it in Ableton 12. Like note effects can do that where it can section off stuff to, to do different things. Kind of like the chord track a little bit in here, how you can set a chord a chord bar or measure or like a block, you know, you know, right above the section that you want to affect the whole, you know, the song, depending on what, what is following the, the chords or, or not, you know, the note effects can be a way of implementing that inside of MIDI somehow. I don't know how, but, you know, the arpeggiator, you, you, you know, we, we don't have, we just have the boring arpeggiator that's been in here since I discovered Studio One, which was 2.0, and then 3.0 came out, and then 4.0 came out, 5.0 came out, and then we in 6, and that same arpeggiator, the same arpeggiator is still the same, they have not touched the arpeggiator, is this thing called a quarter in here? There is. Am, am I rambling on about Studio One? I I kind of didn't want to do that, but hey, you know, the fact of a, of the matter is, Studio One is what this channel is built. Well, it's not. Is I this channel is not built on Studio One. I I say I cover a lot of Studio One videos on this channel, but. What I try to do is push out content for beat makers, music producers, artists, whoever, you know, just music production and how things are put together in terms of production, no matter what platform you're using, right? So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what platform you use. It's all about what makes you feel great and what you resonate with the most which is the bottom line. And that's what I want you to put in the, in the comment section. What is it that resonate with you the most that will be considered your favorite doll? I would think, right? Is that the same thing? What resonate with you tends to be something you favor, right? And for me, it is Studio One. Studio One will always have my heart. I will always mix, like my mix projects will always be in Studio One. When I'm done doing stuff in Logic, did I say Logic? I keep saying Logic. It's so easy to say Logic. When I'm done doing stuff in Ableton Live or Bitwig, by the way, shout out to Bitwig and Student One and how they put that together, that doll, that doll project deal. That's fire right there. But speaking of Bitwig, Bitwig can handle plugins a lot better. When a plugin crash, an instrument crash, some type of effect 
crash, it crashes the plugin and not Bitwig. Bitwig will still run. When I'm loading up Contact or any other instrument that takes a little time to load up, I can go to the next track and keep going and, and you know, and record MIDI or whatever. Like I can maneuver around in Bitwig with no problem, with no hiccups while that instrument is loading. I think that's fire, the way Bitwig is handling, you know, the computer. Whatever they're doing it needs to be something that everybody starts to uh, adopt. But, you know, every doll is different in their own little way, you know. So maybe that's just a Bitwig patent type deal where Bitwig is the only one can that can do stuff like that. But that is one of those things that, that has me working in Bitwig. And... Yeah. So between those three dolls, those are the, you know, I'll say Ableton, what they're doing now, I, f I feel like they bit a lot of stuff from Bitwig, yo. I ain't gonna lie. It's just Ableton kind of does it a little cooler, you know. I can't really lie with you on that one. You know, Ableton Live has bounce in place finally. And Bitwig, Bitwig does it differently. You can bounce in place and it leaves the audio on the track with the instrument like it doesn't delete the instrument track it leaves it there and you can play audio and midi on the same track in bitwig which is crazy studio one does a little different as well they're a bouncing place you you actually bounce something and it spits it out on a separate brand new track while leaving the instrument track in place you know what I mean? Or there is another function where you can bounce in place and it will get rid of that instrument, but it also gives you, it leaves the MIDI notes in there as well. Like, that's crazy. So you have audio with MIDI notes embedded in it. Those are the type of things that I like about Studio One. Like, it's, it's some sneaky features like that. He's sneaky, really sneaky. And the other one is arranged blocks. The arranger, you know, you, you guys heard of the markers. All dolls can have markers in there, but Studio One has this deal where it's called arranger. And that means I can click on that arranger, duplicate real quick, and I could take that section and just by clicking on that arranger block and swap sections so I can swap the hook with the verse real quick, boom, just like that. Go back and forth however I need to. Um, That's a sneaky feature. I love it, though, which is one of the reasons why I still work in Studio One because I think stuff like that is pretty dope. In Ableton, there is a, a nifty trick for doing it, but it's not like that. There is no dedicated arranger with those type of features. That, that can do stuff like that. I want y'all to keep it 100 with me. Just let me know what your favorite doll is. And don't be ashamed of what you're using. If you're using FL Studio, that's fine. If you're using Cubase, if you're using Reason, I mean, those are like typical names. Those are like some of the top or mostly mentioned when you say doll, you mentioned well-known, you know, Pro Tools, Logic, you know, Logic I kept saying by accident when trying to explain something or trying to mention something else. You know, those are some of the typical dolls that you hear most of the times or people doing videos on. But if you mention something that nobody ever heard of, I welcome you to the comment section, please. State that if that's your favorite thing you use it, absolutely. I would love to hear about it because who knows? You know, if you use Luna, you know, which is a new kid on the block, right? Let me know. Let me know what you're using. It really don't matter. I don't I don't bite. I don't discriminate. You know, this is this is a music production channel. I cover a lot of studio one videos, but I don't I can care less what you use because I'm the same way, like, although I have my choices and my picks of what I use to help me create 
you know, my workflow. I watch people creating anything. And if you fire, you just fire. You know, that's just that's what it is. That's how I feel. You know, I, I'm watching you do your thing, man. If you are an NPC user and you fire, bro, I'm watching you. I'm, I'm going to, like, <laughs> I'm going to be sitting back with my foot kicked up, smoking a cigar, watching you work, man, because I just like to watch people work and, you know, make music. I just think it's dope, like, watch people in, the, in their creative process and how thing, things are put together, different aspects, different minds and the way people think. I just think it's, it's, it, that stuff fascinates the crap out of me, bro. That's That's just my thing. And so... It's probably why I'd be on these streams for about five, six, seven, eighty five hundred hours, you know, because I'll just be on here in my creative process showing you guys what's going on or whatever. And you never know what I'm working in, which is, I guess, pretty unique with this with this channel because you just, you know. Um, Ableton, if you want to send me a push three, I I welcome you for that concept. If you just want to send it to me, you know, I'm not going to say no. I'm just not. You know, I can make room on my desk for that. You know, I can just pack this up, put it in the box, and put the push three here. No problem. No problem. In fact, because I have the push two, it already made room for this section, you know. So I appreciate it. Wow, the push, the push three is actually controlling the studio mind. All right, guys, that's all I have for you guys. That's my predictions, and you know, I love to hear from you guys. What's your favorite dog? My name is Ella. Remember, lifestyle is governed by heart.